I've traumatized Rob because I've burped. I always have a sparkling water or something or a coffee and then oh, I burp the a car? lot in the car and then I've just had like a salad, you know, or something with onions. Uh, and, and something do Jordanian. Do I smell salami? Do you want me to I could always thing? tell he's no, like rolling down the window. Okay. He's like. Yeah. The first time he was like, oh, dude, you want me to turn the. The uh, the AC off or is it not okay? And I was like, no, I just uh, and then like a second later he started laughing. He was like, you're so nice, man. <laughs> I was like, not really. But. Uh, he's good. Hey, we have uh, a guest in the studio, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my good friend Chris Marquette is joining us today. Hi guys, Chris. Um, I'm gonna do a bad job of giving you an introduction. Let's but do it. I'm gonna do it uh, the best way I know how. Let's do it. And I didn't take any notes. Because I see that this is all going to come <laughs> from the heart. Okay, here we go. Okay, Chris Marquette. <clears throat> he was okay. Uh, no, Chris is an actor. I met you through a mutual friend, um, and was. Uh, but before that, I, I knew you from movies. You did, and uh, mm -hmm. yes. You, I'm not used to sitting on this side. This thing is. This is we're all we're all turned around. There's some good arm. These are some great arms. Don't you got the good arm? I got a really good one. You got the Rob it's smooth. arm. Smooth. Yeah, it's a oh, nice this is the Rob arm. He gets the best one. smooth. So, like I said, I was going to screw up this intro yeah. in some way. <laughs> um, no, you're a uh, a child actor. You do a podcast called The Coogan Chronicles, um, mm -hmm. where you are child actors. You and AJ Trouth interviewing child actors, mm -hmm. um, which I've listened to both episodes so far. And by the time this comes out, there'll be a few, and it's fantastic. Thank you. And um, and I, I thought it would be really great for you to come on and talk to other former child actors who are also current actors. Current actors. One. Um, One. But yeah, so that's that's how I know you. But I but I just think of you as somebody who is just one of the more thoughtful people I know. And um, thank you. You, I I love hearing you speak, and the way you speak is so. Actors, I have a problem with actors in a lot of times, and we were just talking about this the other day, is you guys can be so up your own ass about the right. craft. And right. and rightfully so. It, you can Rightfully so? You can be so nuanced and like when I hear an actor talk about it and I go, Yeah, it's like if I if I see an actor like Daniel Day Lewis had this interview where he's talking about you know, uh, something about his uh the uh the theater work that he was doing and it got pretty up his own ass but like that's daniel day lewis daniel you know? day. he's so the most okay. excused actor of all time yes mm -hmm. but i but i like when i can um identify and understand what you guys are talking about because sometimes it feels so out of reach what's you know? the what what is the specific like out of reach i'm just it's not a it's not something i'm good at so it's like in, it's the instinctual things that you guys talk about often. That's like when I see a good, and I've been around a lot of great actors, and there's an instinct there. And when I am doing something on camera, I I'm so in my own head that I have to think, you know. And when I watch you, it's just so natural. And same thing with you, Rob. Uh, no. <laughs> now you do not have to throw us any bones over here. Uh, no, but but um, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about a little bit and um, get you guys together because I think there's a, a, a chemistry there. But also, you're just a, a great friend, and and um, I see you on a semi weekly basis, and yeah. and so it's uh, you know you're just somebody who's in my world, and and I and this po podcast that you're doing is so um, interesting and such a unique angle, and I haven't mm -hmm. seen anyone else doing it. I thought it would be you know, I thought maybe you could uh, talk about a little bit about what you guys are trying to do there. Yeah. Such a great name, too. The Coogan Chronicles? Well, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea yeah. you know what, what it, it is? meant. Thank yeah, yeah, no, but I mean, I, yeah. I learned from the show, but yeah, can you We figured it, it would instantly hook other former kid actors and right. everybody else would be like, what the hell is this, all, like this whole thing Coogan. about? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then we realized, too, recently, someone said, you guys should interview Keith Coogan. We're like, whatever. And then we looked up later, two weeks later, we're like someone again said, we should, you should interview Keith Coogan. We're like, who's Keith? And apparently there is a former kid actor whose dad was Jackie Coogan, who that's where this Coogan account gets oh. its name, which for anybody that has no idea. The, so every former kid actor uh, and every current kid actor has what's called a Coogan account. You guys had Coogan accounts. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of it. You never heard of you it? You had one. You're I'm like, sure I did. Yeah, you, you had to. From yeah. the whole side. Yeah, it, it, it'd be completely illegal to work as a kid actor. I had a couple a of cougars actor. coming after me. Well, you got some <laughs> cougars, and you got so you got some of those accounts, uh, and this is a little different. And um, 
But the so the idea was this: there was a kid actor named Jackie Coogan. He and we talk about this a bit in our first episode, but he um, he was the first successful kid actor of his time. He was in The Kid with Charlie Chaplin. He was the kid. And so he was the first successful kid in terms of um, money. He made just as much money as the biggest movie stars of the day did. So in that time, I think it was like a million dollars or two million dollars. And worked for a long time. And then he turned 18 and he was uh, looking at his parents and he said, you know, where's, can I get some of the money I've been working at my whole life? And they um, it told him that they had spent it all, like recklessly. And he didn't really have any idea. So he took him to court and a law was passed after uh, he successfully sued them called the Coogan Law. And that established an account for um, every kid actor thereafter. And you have to put, I think it's like 15, 10 or 15% of any dollar you make goes into the Coogan account as a kid actor. And then when you turn 18, you're supposed to get it. Rob's looking at me like, I got to check this out and see if there's an account out there. It's all hitting me (laughs) because my mom had a boat named the Coogan. And what, now really? I, no, no, no. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Uh, my mom was great with my money. I, I don't, yeah. yeah. I, I don't, but I just never heard of that. Like he said, I really? was very detached. Well, yeah, from there was, was never a day when you were like 18, that you all of a sudden, you're like, your bank account blew up or there was, you had to go sign some extra paperwork somewhere What did happen when you turned yeah, what 18? Did it, what did no. happen? Besides just, becoming legal. Just kept drinking. This will be yeah. interesting because we would love to have both of you guys on the show at of some course, point. Yeah. And so yeah. we'll ask this because that, that become why we called it the Coogan Chronicles is we realized... Our take on this whole thing was we wanted to, two major things. We wanted to go back and celebrate um, the achievements a lot of former kid actors had with their lives and a lot of things that they worked on, a lot of uh, the work, the certain events the work may have led to for them. Like we have a friend of ours who hung out with Desmond Tutu once when she was like nine, you know, like out in some cool part of the world and, you know, just cause, cause she was on like a press tour and her and Desmond Tutu and her mom had dinner. You know, there's like these stories we realize we know of some friends and, and ourselves that sort of live and die with us mm-hmm. and that nobody's ever gonna hear of and nobody's ever gonna ask us about. So we thought, let's go back and revisit a bunch of that stuff because it can cool. be really exciting to be an actor and it can be even more exciting sometimes to be a kid actor because mm-hmm. um, you're a kid and people roll out some certain red carpets for kids. So that was important. And then we wanted to see how all of that sort of shaped people's lives in, into adulthood uh, and what that does to them. I find that yeah. to be the interesting part. Yeah. Is like how do you go from having this insane, um, non-traditional upbringing yeah. that's filled with fame and some and sometimes a ton of money and like, Um, what happens when that doesn't happen anymore and then you're also growing up as a person and it's like it's a a perfect storm of all these things that can really like make you go one way or the other yeah i mean there's people carve out i think what we found there's some commonalities to people's stories and a lot is like people tend to carve out pretty extreme options you know and both of them. So a lot of people go through some really self-destructive phases and a lot of people then bounce back to some incredibly healthy phases mm-hmm. or vice versa. Yeah. You know? And there's a big sort of pendulum swinging. Um, and I think that's just because there, there's a lot of life you live as a former kid actor, a lot more than a lot of other kids might live. Mm-hmm. And so like, you know, my joke to, to AJ and to a lot of friends of mine is, you know, I sort of felt in my early 20s, I feel like a lot of my inner life, I felt a lot like uh, people might in their 50s or 60s, you know, and uh, and didn't realize it. I was only looking back. I was like, oh, yeah, that's just sort of maybe that's what people contend with much later on in their lives. But part of that's because I'd been doing something for 25 years by the time I was like 28. You know, That's so funny because when you speak, sometimes I'm like, who is this guy? Like, <laughs> I'm like, this, there's 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 a wisdom and a quality to you that is like years years away from like what you look like. Oh, thanks. You know, man. and I don't know if it's a compliment. <laughs> yeah. no, no. Uh, I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take no, that. It's, yeah. it's, it's clear that yeah. you've seen and done things and, you've <laughs> yeah. co- and it all comes from such a personal and it's like kind of the same way, you know, when you guys talk, it's like I hear stories and it's like you've lived a thousand lives already. And I can only imagine kind of what that what that does to somebody's psyche and well, There's, yeah. Mm, I mean, yeah. I can, I, I, I don't know if you ever went through this, but like, I remember going through like a moment at 30 being like, should I retire from this? Yeah. Is, I like, sh- is there like a chapter two here? Is yeah. there's, and it's a weird thing to think about, but, but 
but then again, I would have been living this dream since I was eight years old. Yeah. So it was a 22 year old career already. Yeah. So yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. And there's a lot, I think there's just, there's, there's things that happen and, you know, for anybody when you do something long enough and you have to revisit choices and mm -hmm. redetermine what's important to you and where you want to go and what your future can look like. And you do all that all the time, but you usually... I think some of the things former kid actors face very young are things that people face usually when they're much older only because, you know, there's just a natural progression to doing something for for um, decades. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, th I think know. it's, um, and a lot of folks, this is also part of why I wanted to get you on, is that you and Rob's paths crossed. Yeah, crossed yeah. a ton of times. And, yeah. Oh, a ton of times. Okay, because yeah. yeah. I, I know about... Um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but was it your first feature film or your first the lead? Yeah, the second feature film okay, I did. It's a movie called The Tick Code. Yeah. And uh, you were The Tick. I was The Tick. I, and... uh, I had antlers. Yeah. I had <laughs> antlers. I, yep. He really um, got under your skin. Exactly. <laughs> and so this is a movie I haven't seen, but I tried to watch and it was unavailable. Oh, really? I oh, tried shit. to, it yeah. said it's on, available it's on Amazon, but so I think exclusive. I, I had to buy the disc or something. Yeah, you have to buy, you have to get like a DVD from Europe or something. Um, <laughs> but you you play uh, somebody with a, um, I mean, was it autism or is it just no. a Tourette? Tourette's Tourette syndrome, Sorry. yeah. And uh, and who else is in it? Uh, Gregory Hines. The, Gregory Hines, this is Polly why the notes would have been yeah, great. wrote it. And... But uh, Rob is in this movie. Yeah. And was this the first time you guys? No. This wasn't. This wasn't. Okay, Do you I, remember the first time we worked I would love to hear the first. It might have been. I think we did some commercials together. Wow. But we worked together for sure on Saturday Night Live. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. worked on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, Jamie, I've done a lot of work. Okay? <laughs> I'm like, I'm learning. Uh, oh, you don't yeah. know about this stuff? I forgot about that. That's oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I've never, you know what's weird? It's like when you talk about... I forget sometimes what people find interesting, you know? So like yeah. when people are like, oh yeah, on Saturday Night Live, I'm like, oh yeah, people care yes. about yeah, like that. Or like, um, I feel the same way with when I came on here and like when I started talking about drug stories, I feel like, you know, like the hangover in these movies, it's like, it's it's been done, no one cares about that. And yeah. then you tell like a drug story and people are like, I love, oh my God, I relate so much yeah. or this. And I'm like, oh yeah, people wanna hear about like crazy drinking and partying yeah. where I think like, if you've heard one, you've heard them all, but yeah. people love to hear. They're like, I told you in the car the other day, it's like hear, listening to a, a song. Like you sometimes worry about like, oh, didn't I already tell Cass this story? But like, I hear it like, I want to hear it, hear it again because it's like a song I like because it's, <laughs> it's always good, you know? It's yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. glad because I repeat myself. All the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's great. So what, yeah. so you guys were cast as kids in a sketch? We did, yeah. We did. Um, we might have done a couple. I did. I, I know I did it like Saturday Night Live. Me and I have two little brothers, and uh, they were both acting at the time, too. And the three of us would do Saturday Night Live, I mean, like every couple months. So we did it for a long time. But there were a couple episodes, or at least one. I, I remember the working with you because I have a whole... I have a whole great Robert Eiler story that I've been telling. Yes. I don't think I've told in like 15 years, but. This is what it's all about. Yeah, yeah I can you tell it know makes this. me look bad yeah. because you're so <laughs> yeah. excited. I've never heard, no, I've never it heard does. it. Yeah. It I does. To say no, it. it absolutely does. Yeah, for because, sure. And what's funny is before I even realized you guys were doing a podcast and AJ and I were talking about doing this, the Kid Actor podcast, you know, we were riffing on like, well, how do we, okay, so we're, where are we going to, you know, where are we going to find some multi, some facets to this that people wouldn't expect? And one of the things I threw out there, I was like, I was like, you know, what would be cool when we talk about one kid actor bullying another kid actor. And he was like, you have that? I was like, yeah, I got that. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where you come in. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> some of us are method actors. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah. no, but there's a, I don't, you probably, and, and look, you know, obviously we'll take the eight year old's perspective with a small, sure, with a grain of salt, right? Um, but I have a, fairly vivid memory of us working on Saturday Night Live and the way, so Saturday Night Live, the way that it worked, if you were not like a real cast member, obviously you would be shoved into all the extras. You see, you remember this part? No, I remember, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Remember the, I remember all the people. I remember this, uh, it was Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, so you were sho shoved onto the set of Rosie o the Rosie O'Donnell talk show. And so, or was it the talk show or the sitcom show? One of the, I think it was the talk show. It was a talk show, yeah, because yeah, there were rows of seats, like yeah. an audience, like a like a daytime talk show, and so they would sit everybody there, and you would just sort of to yourselves go find your little space, you know, find your space. 
you're there all morning and then at a certain point they give you the worst prison lunch you could ever oh. imagine it's just like a, like a like a 50 cent bologna sandwich mm -hmm. with like a slice of an apple yeah. and they give you this little disgusting thing the whole room smells bad all of a sudden you hang out you have lunch you work for another hour or two and then you go home um but you know you're there all day long, pretty much quiet. And then you rush in, you do your sketch real fast and you rush out. Uh, so everybody's hanging out and I have this memory of like, I don't know what we were all doing on the show, but we're doing some kind of sketch and Rob was there and you and maybe like one or two other kid actors formed a little, like a little posse. There was like a little click to it. Uh, and at some point, God knows what happened, but at some point I got cornered. There was like a like I just was like off somewhere, and next thing I know, it's like Rob and two kids staring at me, and I was like, "Hey!" And, and, yeah. and all I remember is whatever was said and done. I was just like, "You guys are awful people, and you need to leave me the fuck alone. I don't know what is going on right now." And just <laughs> exactly that smile, yeah. <laughs> exactly just like you were really relaxed, and I just remember, <laughs> and because I remember the actual the real real memory I have is not just that moment I have sitting the rest of the day always clocking where you were being like oh, <laughs> right. oh, you know, well it wasn't too hard to miss because I was like 200 pounds yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at 8 but, and oh. Jamie Lynn Sigler everybody well you know this episode's brought to you by our favorite peeps over at Braddock you guys the best most affordable reusable comfortable breathable washable masks on the market made from premium upcycled t-shirt and jersey material super frost super soft eco-friendly so now when you go check out their website at braddockusa.com you'll see they already have great prices but for a limited time they're offering an additional 20 percent off with promo code pj pants we're gonna have to wear masks we're gonna have to keep it going no end in sight so get these masks again 20 percent off your entire order promo code PJ Pants at B R A D D O C K U S A dot com. Braddock USA dot com with promo code PJ Pants. We well, promise way these to catch are, on that one. We promise uh, these are the most washable masks. Did I say these that? Are the, most washable. <laughs> the one that you have is probably just washable. They are, these the, are most the most washed, washable. most washed at my house. Yeah. Uh, support the people, support the show. But you, you were also, you were like really comfortable with yourself. That's all I remember thinking for a long time, wherever, wherever we ran into each other. Because there's a lot of former kid actors that are very quiet and well-behaved and very like, we're here Not to be me. professional. No, Rob was like very comfortable with himself. And he was like, I was like, you're no different wherever you were anywhere else. Yes. How old, how old would you say or, you guys were here? Eight, nine? Yeah, SNL, I don't Seven. know, but I think uh, Tick Code, we were 12. Yeah, Tick Code, we were, yeah, But SNL, yeah, eight yeah. or nine. So you were just starting to drink. Yeah, right. <laughs> was I was just looking thinking, to steal this is the Rosie beginning. O'Donnell yeah. smoked yeah, exactly. I was looking in her drawers to see if she had a couple cigarettes yeah. anywhere. Well, well that's you... weird because Jamie says that exact thing about really? me when Jamie describes just me. Just yeah. the most comfortable. So comfortable. Like, just confident. Way too comfortable. But like, just like, like, doesn't put on airs just no. who he is. Yeah knows his like he deserves to be in the room is and, and i'm like the i have i've worked hard on myself over the past couple of years <laughs> but i was the opposite yeah where i was like i don't belong here nobody <laughs> likes me so yeah he was just always that at a very yeah. young age yeah the opposite of insecure for sure mm -hmm. i think it's like and, i don't feel like i get that i don't well, feel like that perspective a any of us belong you know what i mean like when people are like i've had friends who were like when i was struggling with stuff were like do you feel like you deserved your success maybe that's why you're so and i'm like i feel like everyone deserves sure success the same way i feel like i think it's crazy that any of us are anywhere you know what i mean sure. like i i grew up with the idea of like i've said it before on here but it's like at best you're gonna get your grandpa's job and be a super like that's it yeah. so it's like once i did one acting thing it was like oh we're all like this is a free now everything from here on out yeah. is totally just sort of like yeah can you believe this shit like yeah. i'm eating like you know, there's yeah. like fucking cookies and crap i'm like this is so fucking nuts 50 like, cent bologna sandwiches yeah wow. like i'm yeah. like everyone's like ew these are gross i'm like help oh, <laughs> bring them over here you know so you're so yeah. so though like the i i don't know however long i don't know if we ran into each other after saturday night live all i do remember is then i get this movie the tick code and there's a and in the movie there is a little bully. There's just a kid who's like making fun of him for having Tourette syndrome, and it's like a whole thing, <laughs> you know. And like I think they get in a fist fight, something or other. And um, and uh, and I show up the one day, and there and I look at the call sheet, and it's Robert Eiler, and I was like, 
fuck you. Oh, and you remember. <laughs> it's like, yeah, and of course yeah. I was like, that. oh, no, no. Oh. Uh, no, but not, no. I actually wasn't, like, in, in all sincerity, I thought, that's perfect. <laughs> it's sure. right. You know, Because I actually corner you in a vestibule in the movie, I remember. Exactly. Yeah. And then we have to do it. And uh, and then what's in weird. In a vestibule. Here, here, yeah. Here's what I do remember yeah. happening. It, it was a the. A vestibule? Yeah. yeah, what is a vestibule? A hallway. Hey, listen, I'm a man a of the. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. No, I thought that's where you went in the. <laughs> we were in the foyer. Like, of... confession. <laughs> no, I thought the vestibule. It was like, that's what we used to call. So at a. In I'm a, sorry to interrupt your story. Don't be. In the New York City building. Let's go to vestibule. That was not worth skipping over, for sure. In the New York City building like there's the steps then you walk up you get through that first door and in between that first door and the second door that was the vestibule oh, that's what we so don't because we like, oh, we smoke in people's vestibules okay, oh. that's you know? i've never heard that said i saw it really? at a, yeah. i saw it at a floor plan once, get a like what the fuck's a vestibule a dictionary definition <laughs> <laughs> he's exactly right. it you're exa- this is the he's goddamn exact right definition again. no wonder i'm so fucking comfortable all the time <laughs> <Yeah>. huh <laughs> he didn't even bat an eye yeah. vestibule <laughs> D-E-S. Because uh, I remember in the scene also that I had to chase you half a block and then run oh, into yeah. the vestibule. And I'm 195 pounds at the time. And they're like, all right, take two. I'm like, <laughs> take two. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? You know, it was, my, it was my first movie. No way, really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, really? So it was, yeah, it was your, my, your it first It was my second movie because the, the same director I worked with on his first movie, that which was mine. So a few years before, that same guy, a uh, guy named Gary Winnick. Great, the um, yeah. best. Because I did another great... one of his. Oh, you did afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was always was it... like, kept in touch with super. Uh, yeah. Tad- tadpole. Tadpole. You yeah, did tadpole. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tadpole. He was such a nice guy. Such a nice dude. Yeah. yeah really and now nice. you're the lead. Yes. Yeah, so now, yeah. I got this. I got the lead role. I had a weird relationship with that guy, though. Unfortunately, he he didn't. He cast me, and then he wanted to uncast me. Oof. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, uh, and then later on, after the movie was done, was like. You're the best thing that's ever happened to my career, and you're like, I thought I'm pretty sure you were gonna fire me for a yeah. while. You know? So there's a yeah, it was a I had a little roller coaster with him. But he made this little interesting movie with a Sopranos guy named Michael Imperioli, and Michael Imperioli did this little movie with him called Sweet Nothings. That was this intense, insane, dramatic movie. Uh, I guess Gary Winnick and somebody else had found these um, journals of a, a, a recovering heroin addict that was, oh. had written these journals while he was kicking heroin in some little like slum apartment somewhere in, um, in New York. And they found it, and then they wrote a movie out of it and found the guy, and then they made uh, this movie, and Michael Imperioli plays that guy. And so I played his son, uh-huh. um, and then years later went and auditioned for the Tick Code. And then we're running down the street, getting chased and and bullied. But the thing, why I even bring it up is the thing that stuck with me is I remember, and this might sound like I'm gloating, it's not. Like I remember we go to show up in the thing and I'm thinking like, okay, is Robert gonna be cool now? Or is this gonna be, and you were insanely cool. To the point where I was like, yo, where where is this? Like, when are you gonna corner me? When is this gonna, when's this gonna, right. when, when are you gonna flip this Well, switch? kids I had bullied were a dime a dozen. I probably forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well that's all it was. That's what I realized is later on. I was like, the Saturday Night Live, and you were like, oh yeah. I was like, well oh, that was just another Thursday for you. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, uh, oh, you don't think about that every yeah, you day don't, Yeah, that isn't something you carry around on your shoulders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, and so that's, those are, the, those are the Robert Eiler memories that I have. Wow. And past that, I don't, uh, I don't remember. That's if we great. ever ran into each other again. See, I, yeah, so I don't bad. remember, but what I remember from that movie was like, it was shortly before I decided, like, I have to lose weight. Like, once I got Sopranos and I was like, oh, I could get girls. Like, I, I, I'm going to need to lose weight. I just remember everything being so hard to do. Like, <laughs> I remember there was a scene where you and who was the other kid who was like your best friend in the movie? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. I forgot his name. Oh, he wasn't all famous. You yeah, forgot yeah. about him. Right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, Desmond. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But so you guys are in a bathroom stall and you're trying to figure out a way to get me to stop bullying. And I think somebody said like you needed to take chicken feet and like something else and like burn something and you're trying to put like a curse or whatever. Oh, yeah. And you're in a bathroom stall and Gary's like, yeah, so in the shot, he's like, I'm going to have the camera up here. You're going to slide underneath the bathroom stall. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm 195 pounds. Bryce, can you pick up a pull up a picture of me in that movie, maybe? I don't know if there's even I don't one know exists. if you were he as... He plays a kid named Denny. That's D-E-N-A-Y. Yeah, D- Denny. Oh, yeah. If I was as... That was such a good bully name. Such a good Danny. Bully. If I was as fat, you are going to say? Denny and Gary. Yeah, you... you. Oh, no, trust me. I have pictures <laughs> from... I have pictures with me and... um. 
Polly Draper. Yeah. Where I am, dude, my <laughs> face is so, but anyway, I remember. Also, I don't know if you know, the other little bully kid is one of my mm. little brothers. It was my brother, Eric, who really? became your little like henchman. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, And he yeah. also had the same, like right around that age, he was like, Oh, you know, guys, I think I'm going to stop eating the McDonald's with you people and I'm going to start eating salad. <laughs> like, what's going on with you? And he just started confronting this, like, weight issue that I think he confronted for a long time. And, uh, oh, yeah. But yeah. it's it, it's strange, I think, for, for, like, former kid actors when you are confronting that because there's a normal yeah. thing as a person and then there's a whole, like, it affects your work. It affects yes. when someone's asking you to run on camera, you yes. know? Yeah. Like, there's something. Because my brother was really bothered by the fact that they were so excited that he could be, like, a little bully. He was like, well, I don't know, why can't I be one of your friends? And I was like, oh. I don't know, because he was this little. Now go stand with that fat kid over there. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, exactly right. it, literally. Yeah. This, uh, yeah. yeah, I just I remember him like saying because he was a skinny guy, the director, and he's like, yeah, yeah you're just gonna slide under the bathroom stall. And by the way, we're in a public bathroom yeah. somewhere, and I, I wasn't oh. even a germaphobe yet, and I remember being like, this is kind of gross. That's like, the I'm, first thing I think <laughs> yeah. about when I see. I'm like, is that a set yeah. made to look <laughs> like a dirty bathroom? Because yeah. you always see actors like hugging the toilet bowl or they're right. like on yeah. the ground. And I'm like, like that. I'm, th I'm worried about the germs. I don't know. They take care of actors. Do we have the yeah. picture? There's always like four chance? people that sanitize the shit out yeah. of the toilet. Yeah. 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 Unless it's like, yeah. Yeah. Unless it's <laughs> some sketchy indie, kind. which we've all done. Where yes. It's, you know, yeah. And there's that. You yeah. definitely picked up something along yeah. the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the first time I saw you in a movie. And this is not, uh, you know, I uh, the movie Just Friends was oh, yeah. just, it came and everyone's like, here's another one of these schlocky uh, rom-coms. But for some reason, it just, it grabbed me. And I think yeah. it grabbed oh. a bunch of people. Oh it, my God. It, it was I like, love that movie right, so much. Post uh, Van Wilder, Ryan Reynolds? Post Van Wilder. So it was like, okay, like we like this guy. And yeah. then you played his younger brother. Yeah. And I remember... <laughs> I, and, and I didn't know who you were. I was like, that guy is funny. I, I like to think oh, I could, thanks, I'm like your comedic sensibility. Here's yeah. the thing with you, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna kiss your ass. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm liking your, today. Your, your, your comedic uh, um, I senses totally thought we were talking about are, penises. Oh, here, here's a photo. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, no way, well done, look at that. Wow. So this is after I lost Dude, nice weight. nice suit. Nerd. Yeah, you, you were ready for the Dude, premiere. Dude, wait till you see the transformation between this and <laughs> during filming. So this is the premiere, it's way after. Yeah. Because I remember it took a while. Yeah, it's like a couple years maybe. Remember yeah. that woman oh, from really? Texas? I do, it's Change. Carol Kane. And that's Fisher Stevens, yes. who's so dope. And Fisher yeah. Stevens is like a it produces some of the best documentaries like you'd ever yes. see. Like I, I guarantee, if you named your top ten in the last ten years, he had something to do with it. But he also weirdly was the actor in Short Circuit. Yeah, remember the guy? Yeah. He was the yeah, Johnny the Five guy. Johnny yeah, Five. yeah. yeah. He played the Indian. Exactly. Yes. The time of day where you can actually I... like switch ethnicities. Yes. And, like so he's got to do a documentary on world. that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And By I think way, that's really it. I don't who know. Who looks like the bully in this picture? I know. Just what about to say, yeah, leather jacket, McGee, and gold chain. You got the this was, and power stance going, too. <laughs> That's this was, how I stand, I, dude. For a long time, I, I thought about this because it hit me three years later just how um, this is like a, a special lesson in how you don't dress for any sort of event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, like, I had never been to anything to take my picture before, of nothing course. at all. And so me and my brothers went to Macy's in Burbank, and go. we were like, yo, what do we do? And I was like, well, there's the T-shirt section that I know real well. And then look at that leather jacket over there. That looks pretty cool. And it was like, you know, an adult's leather jacket. So it was too big. And, You're dressed uh, like a hitman. You learned uh, honestly, as you go. It's, Training it's to be how, a hitman. It, it's, how, it's, how we, it's what we were going for. So we, we went succeeded. To a, we went to a Golden Globes once. <laughs> yeah. And I, I didn't know to like, you ask people for dresses or yeah. like how anything works. So I went to Bloomingdale's. Yeah. And I got a dress and we were on the carpet and like, we were walking by because nobody wants to talk to us. We we're just like walking, like looking. Somebody's like, oh, the kids from The Sopranos, come here. And I'm like, okay. And she was like, well, so who dressed you? Where's your dress from? And I was like, Bloomingdale. Bloomingdale. Uh, like, yeah, like uh, excuse me. Okay. Yeah, no, Stupid so idiot, poor I Jamie. I slept in braids no, last night no, to make my totally hair wavy. True. Like literally, that's yeah. what I did. It's funny because we end up like on the, <clears throat> plug the podcast again yeah. no but yes. uh, but th that has become a subject of it because I went to uh, the Emmys when I was like 20 years old and this TV show was on and uh, and I didn't nobody it took me a long time to realize nobody preps 
kids for this. So I wasn't quite a kid, but I, I was. I'd started on the show as a kid, and all of a sudden I showed up to the Emmys, and it was the same thing where I showed up, and I had gone to somebody else in the cast hooked me up with like a costumer person, like a stylist. Mm -hmm. So I showed up to the stylist, they give me suits, and then at the end, <clears throat> I'll never forget, I like opened up the suit, and it said like four, four grand. And I was like, Jesus, mother, I didn't even know clothes could actually be that expensive. I was like, four fuck. So I was like, hey man, do you take a check? Mm. And he, I'll never forget the look, and the look signified something later. So he looked at me really confused. He was like, um, sure. And I was like, that's so weird. A year later, I'm on the show, and I tell the actress that hooked me up with the stylist, I was like, what do I do with this $4,000 tuxedo that I had to buy for the Emmys? And she goes, you bought it? <laughs> And I was like, "What? Yeah, don't. What do you mean?" Oh, no. And I realized I didn't know that they rent it to you or give yes, it to you. They lend it so I just thought, "Oh, you buy these things, and now I gotta buy it because I'm here." And the actress hooked me up with the thing, and so I had this four thousand. <gasps> and she looked at me. She's like, "Why would you buy it?" I was like, "Who tells you? What do you mean? I just <laughs> yeah. walk out for free? I had no idea." And the same same deal. I showed up on the red carpet. And had no idea what I was supposed to be doing. Oh. Someone was like. Are you the kid it? from Desperate Housewives? And I was like, no, it's not no, me. And like, move on. And I was like, okay. And that was the whole. No, it's not him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. Okay. You were talking about Just Friends. Just Friends. Okay. okay, Just Friends. So you, 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 have this, you have this crazy sort of comedic sensibility. You're so funny. But then, Thanks, um, you know, I, I haven't watched your new movie, I Hate the Man in My Basement. But oh, yeah. I, I saw the trailer. But I also know that you can get. You can get dramatic. I can get a little dramatic. Dark and you're very <laughs> versatile. Um, Thanks, but, man. Uh, so I want to talk about that movie. Yeah. But uh, real fast, you just stood out in Just Friends to me. And what? And do you get asked or bothered about Just Friends equally or as much as uh, anything you've ever done? And do you are, do you have a fond memory of making that? I do. Doing that character? Yeah, I do. It's a weird. It was a. A lot of my, it was it was a very similar to a lot of my career, which is I ended up I got lucky to work on some cool things, and then and when they actually came out, nobody gave a shit, mm -hmm. like just didn't. It just like came and went, and it was sort of like, all right. And then Just Friends in particular was like maybe two or three years afterwards, it all of a sudden picked up life. I think yeah. they ran it on TV, and it started becoming like a little holiday type movie. Yeah, and then people liked it, and it's really funny like it it's a so genuinely funny. funny movie it's so uh, good yeah it's really good and it's the when they did it so there's a, the guy who directed it is named roger cumble and roger cumble said to everybody he was like who weirdly he directed cruel intentions Ooh, nice yeah so he but he, but he came off that stuff. i know yeah. exactly mm -hmm. and so he came off some like really intense like teen draw like intense dark yeah comedy. That, yeah. that one specifically yeah, yeah <laughs> like that to go swing to just friends yeah. is strange right and but he's really talented and the guy said he looked at everybody he basically said look we want to make the funniest rated r movie but pg-13 you know, and then that weirdly ended up being, I think, the reason why it, it came out so well, but also why it disappeared when it came out is because it was it looked like this sort of like raunchy, another rom-com dumb yeah, the marketing was weird. Yeah, yeah. like a National Lampoon-y type thing, sure. maybe or or a really dumb rom-com. And it actually sits kind of in the middle, you know, right? Because the fat, the fat suit gives it a sort of like nutty professor, yeah. you know, yeah, uh, yeah flubber. Uh, that sort of, oh, yeah. it's, it's Ryan yeah. Reynolds, but he's fat. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Like, and, uh, I don't know about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and then so yeah, so it it I think the life that it sort of took, because it's PG thirteen because it's actually a movie that like has the same laughs you'd get from, you know, uh, I mean I don't know Ace Ventura may be the closest thing prior right only in that it's PG thirteen and it might make you laugh as hard as The Hangover does or yeah. you know anything rated R mm -hmm. essentially so it found a nice little niche. Um, I think for that reason, and then for for me, it's it's lived on in my life only like every holiday season. So it to, like is. it disappears yeah. from my life, and then all around like just about now, like October, November, all of a sudden people are like, "Hey, where'd you go to high school?" Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Huh? And they're like, "Oh no, you're the dude. You're the yeah. friend. You're the little brother." Yeah, yeah. So that's the uh, that's it. But the the stories I have that stuck with me on it are the. Um, Cumble and the writer was really great, a guy named Adam something. And he um really great, nice writer. And he was they were kind enough, they started letting everybody improvise. So we so wow. all the slapping stuff that happens between Ryan Reynolds and I was all made up yeah. like on the day. Yeah. And part of it was uh, was 
they I have two little brothers and I kicked the living shit out of them growing up. And so we sat down on sets. You deserved everything I did <laughs> yeah, to you. Exactly. Back then. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. This is redemption. Honestly, my brothers would exactly say that. Right? Would, yeah. <laughs> they would, uh, yeah. They'd go, We're not standing up to Robert Eiler for you, dude. Right? Yeah. You yeah. need somebody like that in your life. Uh so you know, so we sat down like the day of the first day of shooting and they were like what else can we do? Does anybody have like, cause they're all scenes that take place in a living room and stuff. So they were like, what else does anybody want to just have fun and, you know, make some stuff up. And, uh, and I talked a lot about how often I'd just walk up and slap my brothers in the face and move on into the next room. Um, and how, what a normal game that was. And that just, it grew. It just grew yeah, from there. Great. Yeah. Um, it, it's so weird. Uh, that uh, you were nominated for a best MTV best. Oh, you kiss. really did some research <laughs> on this. <laughs> Just That's like so I don't funny. have any friends that yeah. have been nominated for best kiss. You know, yeah. I think also a Teen Choice. Yeah, it's uh, Teen Choice hey. Award. Yeah, with Teen Anna Choice Fa Awards, right? Anna Ferris too. At that time, I mean. Yeah, oh she had just. I know. So hot. I mean, just <laughs> yeah. hot in both senses of the yeah. word. You know what? What was that? Like? Was that like? She's great. She's yeah. like. Um, she has like the great like reluctant actor story where she was like I think she was like in Seattle. I don't like the reluctant actor story. I know, but story. but that's what it that's is. Annoying. She she like she yeah. sent out a tape. She's like, I don't know, I did this uh, tape and like my friend I wasn't pushed sure. me to do yeah, stand up. Yeah, she's like, I got this thing. For, and yeah, next uh, thing you know, she's hilarious. Scary movie. Yeah, for scary movie. Wow. So she was like living somewhere else, God sent off her. a little tape, and then got a call months later from like the Wayne's brothers being like, You're flying to L. A. We need to audition you in person. Yeah. And did and kind of just was like, okay, and yeah. then yeah. walked right into it and. Didn't ever look back. Wow. Um, That's yeah, like, she's great. Yeah. I remember when right when Tinder started, I was single and I hopped on. And I remember that's that was everyone's attitude on Tinder. Like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Like, yeah. How does this even really yeah. work? Or like, you know, my 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 yeah. girlfriends, uh, I, you didn't even talk to me. It's like, what? Yeah. 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 And now it's a take some ownership over it. Yeah. yeah. She got horny. That's funny. Uh, okay, so you, you have a movie that came out this year. I do, yeah. Um, I had... I did this movie called I Hate the Man in My Basement that came out, yeah. um, which is a really interesting little like genreless mashup mm -hmm. type of film. And um, it's a romantic comedy, not a horror movie, although it sounds like nice. one. Uh, and it's a, a guy locks another guy in his basement, uh, and you don't know why for a long while, except that it might sort of feels justified. And yeah. then he meets somebody that he starts to fall in love with and now has to figure out what he does with this man in his basement. So it's really good. It's really smart. It's a very tiny movie. We made it for like literally nothing, you know? Yeah. Um, like I, I pre, I, I'm sure everybody involved like lost money paying yeah. for gas on the way. You right. know? Um, but it's cool. It's really smart. It's really interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really proud of it. It's how I met my wife. So I did this. Um, yeah, it was like, like most indie movies takes a long time to come out. So uh, we did it almost four or five years ago and wow. yeah and oh, so wow. yeah so we uh we met there i thought i was being a super creep on the set uh, so that works huh? and, yeah on it set it apparently does oh yeah. Cassim, you'd be yeah. married if being a creep really works yeah exactly I mean, well, excuse me Bryce like that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> some of my jokes are just for Bryce. is uh, that's funny is is on set crush on set crushes you know yeah. you hear people is that was that ever a, a real thing for you not for me, but I yeah. saw it so often that I stayed away completely from it because yeah. it seemed like all it did was wreck people's sure. lives. It's, yeah, it can fuck you up. Oh, it fucks everybody it up. Well, you had one, but it was. Did you meet uh, Jerry before or after? You no, were on... Jerry and I wasn't. Like, yeah, Jerry and I had met so much before. I think it was oh. when we started to work together. I was like, oh. I kind of like hanging out with you more. Like, I always really liked you, but like, I. So, yeah, it came it from that. But yeah. I, I think we're talking about like when you have like another relationship yeah. and then you work and you're like, this person's like, your, your chemistry is like crazy and you're doing things as a couple would do, it can fuck you up. Yeah. And it's, you know, like a filming. It's a couple of weeks or a couple of months. It's very intense. It's, it's like your whole camp. life. Yeah. And, it get, and then it's over. And then it's over. Yeah. And, and so I, I think for people, yeah. you get in this little bubble. And what I've always noticed with a lot of sets, particularly a lot of actors, is like, you know, you, it'd be like, I, maybe if it's like anybody, if you were, if you were suddenly catapulted, if you went on a trip somewhere, you sometimes get a lot of clarity on your own life, right? If you're just mm -hmm. out of your routines, you're out of your normal stuff. And so I think that's what happens to a lot of people on sets is yes. they're all of a sudden, they get a different perspective of themselves and their lives, lives. And then they also get to sort of confront a whole bunch of 
inner stuff. And if there's like an easy solution to some problems you might have in your life, you might pick it up right there. Yeah. Um, and I so think people right. do that with relationships often. On so sets. well said. Because I've just seen a lot of like, a lot of marriages break up, a lot of people, there's a lot of cheating, there's a lot of stuff. And, it, and it's in the name of like, oh my God, thank God this is happening. And two months after the shoot, you're like, how are you and so-and-so? They're like, dude, we don't talk anymore. It's yeah. real bad. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah that's what's order. weird about it's it. It's weird, yeah, because well, it's just different? a little bubble. What you know? was different with your now wife? Yeah, well, I think, I think like, you know, 20 years of being an actor and seeing it and mm -hmm. staying away from it. I tried to date um, a couple of people I worked with, and it was really short-lived. Um, the only time it was r intensely serious was a total nightmare. Everything I thought it would be. I was like, oh, we should have just been co-workers you know yeah. it's like that that was it this made sense um so i think i experienced the awful part of it and knew what that was and knew that this wasn't that yeah you know um and then uh and then just did the really responsible thing which was like hey why don't we just hang out weeks after the shoot and let's not like talk during the shoot or do anything and, smart yeah and so we just we got really responsible and went to like a museum weeks later and we we're like well, that's kind of well, cool. Now, now real people. Yeah, yes. you have this yeah. sort of, uh, it's documented on screen, this sort of you guys yeah. getting, having those first few, like the chemistry is visible. Yeah, sure. it's, yeah, it is. It's strange. I think one, you know, it'll be uh, interesting maybe 10 years from now to like look at it and go, oh, that was us falling for each other. Yeah. It's so weird. In this weird movie where I've got a guy locked up in my face. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. so weird. You know? Yeah. And we have a kid now too, so it'll be even stranger, I imagine, for like my daughter one day to look at this and go holy shit because it was it was us like us dancing together and you like the chemistry was really oh. apparent and people were like the movie's really crazy it's weird it's awesome yeah. it's funny it's really dark and stuff but you two together or yeah. you know that's real nice oh. so that's what, yeah so it'll be i think it'll be weird for our daughter one day to how old is your see. daughter she's only nine months old a little <gasps> fresh baby. she's yeah. a baby she is a baby baby how you have two been? i have two little you boys have two little boys yeah that's cool i'm glad i have a girl yeah. Yeah. You glad yeah. you have a boy? Um, I Boys? mean, yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I I feel like it'd be kind of fucked up for me to say no. <laughs> like, yeah. No, but, I hate him. Yeah. Why but, are you glad you have a girl? Well, no, I just, no, I think there's something, yeah, maybe I should have prefaced that instead of just sort of. No. Uh, I, I think there's something when you're the, when it's the opposite sex, I've noticed, it's a little less pressure as a parent. Maybe. Mm. Little, just a little less. I feel a little like, little well, like, like I can be oh, a fun. you're not gonna have to de. Also, I feel like, oh, I don't have to go through what I went through again. Yeah, that maybe you know too. Like, oh, yeah. great! Yeah. I don't have to go through all that catty girl shit with you guys. I just have to tell you to make sure to wear a condom. Yeah. And no means no. <laughs> yeah. And respect women. Yeah. Like I'll teach you all that shit. Yeah. But I don't have to deal with like the catty clicks, hopefully, and that kind of stuff. So there was a relief on that part, and there's also some kind of sweet thing that happens with you know little girls and their dads and little boys and their moms that like yeah. you just you just can't yeah. replace with the other one and it's it's special um but i mean it's all good i mean yeah, are there I mean, are there moments where there's i there's actually I, no real complaint i totally get of that. course yeah. of yeah. course i it's mean like, speaking of wearing a condom i i wasn't sure if i wanted kids now i'm gonna have a kid immediately just so my kid and your kid are on the same age and yeah. she could <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got to keep it going. We gotta, keep the, yeah, keep I, the I pattern going. For, yeah. Yeah. That's ask pants at gmail.com. Yeah, I need to right. donate your uterus to Rob. Yeah. Uh, we're trying yeah. to we're trying to get Rob set up. Uh, Don't we're single? not. Are you I, I am, but we're yeah. not. We get a get lot of submissions. Up. This whole folder is filled with submissions. He's not filled asking with, for Filled it. with headshots and resumes. He doesn't want it. going to look through. I want it. Well, if you need to get set up just as bad as me, but He wants it too. Are you single too? It's fair, yes. Yeah. Let's just say yes, you know. That's cool. Uh, it's, it's complicated, <laughs> but that's the same answer as when they were still together, so I... Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then they come over my house every Sunday and play with my kids and see how it is. And so go you home have, and like, like a, a girlfriend, not girlfriend? Yeah. Oh. Well, it's more of a not girlfriend, but, like... Um, <laughs> but does she... She doesn't know. Yeah. 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 She doesn't know. Right. Does she, she doesn't telling. know. I does just watch her through a telephoto lens. Yeah. Is this how, is this how you guys communicate about this? It's things? not his girlfriend, but every time I get in his car, I have to adjust the seat back. <laughs> so, oh. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's not true. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm tall, yeah, dude. True. I'm By tall. The way, there's bro. like a there's a future show of just your guys' carpools. Like that's, <laughs> yeah. I say it all it's the so time. Great. It's guys, an IGTV like, show. It literally doesn't need to exist anywhere else outside of the car. Yes. Like it's, yeah. you guys seem to pick up on every we nuance yeah, of each other's lives get... just through the car. <laughs> See? You're like, oh, listening to Beck this morning. I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, there is just... definitely a vibe to the car <laughs> yeah. right over here. Yeah. Um, but a, a lot of it is uh, a lot of it. We're, today was we're talking about the Bachelorette, <laughs> and how insane that show is. Um, as I've never that, gone on the train. Well, good. I don't and know. to yeah. stay off, yeah, you know, cool. it's like yeah. never trying cocaine. Yeah. Or, you know, it's like you're better <laughs> off. Um, as as an actor, do you what do you watch, and and do you have like a favorite uh, like series that you are watching? Do you find your tastes t- to lean towards prestige television, or do you like? get off on some like popcorny on some 90 day fiance yeah yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah there we go um yeah i wish i i was for a long time i was like i watch this and i watch this and i listen to this yeah right. um and then i realized i was like i don't like any of those yeah. things yeah. <laughs> like, none at all yeah uh despite sometimes really wanting to be a part of them um i uh yeah i i, I watch um I think a lot of what other people, you know, watch. I like to read a lot more, quite honestly, than I like here watching we go. Here's stuff. Here's the up yeah, your own is, ass. Yeah, no, this really yeah. is. But that's the truth. Is. Yeah. And but here's the thing: I read I a lot of like films. I read a lot of graphic novels. You know, so oh. that's so where I'm, I'm not I'm reading, you know, there. the Iliad or anything like that. Sure. But um, uh, you know, um, but uh, yeah, I, I like uh, I like to read. But I mean, you know, I mean Rick and Morty and South Park, and uh, but I also just watched my wife and I watched like Away, this Netflix show. Yeah. Like, yeah. Which is pretty cool, you're and just got canceled. To, you're sitting next way to Hillary expert? Swank's arm. Body Look double. We have the same this part. You know, uh, you've got the same biceps yeah, as yeah, Hillary Swank. He's convinced he has the same buff. body as Hillary. Swank. Honestly, so am I. Looking at you now, <laughs> <laughs> it makes total sense. You think that that is absolutely uh, the body you have. Yeah. What, okay, and the well, chin line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you said yeah. graphic novels. Now yeah. I will go there with you. Yeah. What are you it. reading? Um, I went and revisited Preacher this year. Oh, great. Um, I have the absolute editions. Oh, really? There oh. we go. Yeah. I need to get into it. I just What'd pulled out my old show? dusty ones. Not excited. I, I was really it. disappointed. I yeah, hear it. Really sucked. Um, I think it started with. The graphic novel's way better. The graphic novel's like yeah. way, way better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's just things about the graphic novel you couldn't actually put on television, is yeah. really what it's about. You know? <laughs> yes. um, so, yeah, no, uh, yeah, I really dug Preacher. And I was a huge fan of The Boys. That was my favorite for a I long never time. read it. Yeah, but I, I actually is, really dig the show. Oh, uh, then go back to the to the cuz I yeah. think the show's great, but mm-hmm. I think the graphic novels are just as good, if not better. Mm-hmm. So, it's um yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Um I'm in the middle of Saga. Cool. I love Saga. Saga's yeah, great. I dig Saga. Um East vs. West. Have you ever gotten into this? I didn't. No, I did not. Okay. I was thinking if I read one. No. My favorite all time is Transmetropolitan. Which I is haven't like read a cy- cyberpunkish. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Um, and that's Fables? and that's us. And that's, that's us. us. What yeah. are you guys' favorite uh, comic books? <laughs> yeah, graphic novels? Transmetropolitan. I, ju- I just stole your best friend. And the Iliad. Um, we also Iliad. didn't get to talk about aliens. And I don't know if you told them that I invited you to meet aliens. No. Wait, um, what? I got. Yeah, he sent like me a text saying like, "Hey, no, um, no, no, what no, this no, podcast? Also, deal. do you want to meet aliens?" Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I said yes. Yeah. You know because. Like I've said on my Instagram and and publicly, it's like every night I do give the authorization to be abducted because I feel like if I send that vibe out there, they're gonna find you. Somebody yeah. will receive it. And You're be putting like, oh. it out because yeah. a lot of times they've just got to be circling and being like who 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 and yeah, like any an volunteer, no one's volunteering. I don't think they yeah, want volunteers. I think that's where you might be going wrong. Yeah, that's I do. maybe it. Maybe I sit you need my bed, to, yeah. ass up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> just I'm your guy. Super coy about yeah. it now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's that about? Uh, so I just recently went to like a friend's birthday and. Um, like a little safe COVID safe thing. And they, but it was at somebody's house and I met this dude and he was really strange. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and his name's Mark and Mark was a nice guy and Mark, uh, and I got to talking and I just learned that Mark was told not to talk about aliens during this party. But, uh, and I, so I thought I had pride. Somebody this told out. him not Somebody to. said specifically, <laughs> Mark, when we go to this party, you are not allowed to talk about aliens. Oh, so on his mask, there was an alien. With <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, no, he also had the look of an alien, just a little bit in the face, you know, sure. yeah. uh, Those just had a little like, very, I, saw, I was watching MSNBC yesterday and some guy <laughs> on there just, he looked like a, like a It's reptilian. like when people look like they're dogs. 
Yeah, it yeah. is a little like that. There is there. I think yeah. it's the like it's the, it's the it is a little or their cars. Yeah, yeah. There's a. I, I think there's something to the like they're they're wide eyed and they don't blink and it's just oh. like it's just you're like did you not blink in like six hours like right. just or they little, have to consciously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so this guy, Mark, uh, we got to talking. Mark um, had, it was at his house, Mark had like 50 walkie-talkies just sitting on the table. Yeah. Well, you got to have <laughs> yeah. one to each frequency. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad you know all about stuff. I, 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 he schooled me. And so one all just- All of a sudden you just all, hear, take me. <laughs> yeah. Is that an asshole yeah. on this one? <laughs> Mark, it's Cass. Over. <laughs> I'm ready. Um, so I get around finally to. I was like, "Yo, Mark, what's up with the walkie-talkies?" And um, and three hours later, uh, he oh, was showing shit. me ex experiments uh, where he talks to aliens. And by the end, You're I don't think meth Mark. With him? Yes, exactly. And by the end, I've drank Kool Aid, yeah. and I was like, "All right, Mark, so I'm sleeping over tonight." And yes. then we, uh, no, but Mark doesn't know that I don't believe in aliens. But Mark looked at me at one point. He goes. Well, you're a believer, man. <laughs> and I think yeah. maybe you're ready. And I was like, ready for what, Mark? And he was like, I think you're ready to meet him. And I was like, meet the meet the walk. Who's on the other side of the walkie-talkies, yeah. Mark? And he's like, yeah. you're ready to, to have a, a good close encounter. And I was like, oh, so here's what's happened since. Is I thought I need to find. I can't do this alone. <laughs> I, no, I was just going to find... say, were you alone? Call Fisher yes, Stevens I was alone. and make exactly. this documentary. Call Fisher, yeah. Uh, and, then, uh, and then Kasim says, you want to come on this podcast? And so I listened to a couple episodes and I, you know, flipping through, I was like, which one should I do? And I was like, Alejandro Rahase, oh, mm -hmm. aliens. And I hear this. And so I, that was the, I was like, yo, if, we're, if I'm going to meet an alien, wow. uh, you, you got to come with me. Yes. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, you know, the uh, the range on those walkie-talkies are up to two miles. Yeah. So I'd say anyone he's talking to is probably just around the corner. Yeah. Mm. Uh, is he in Texas? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, Ojai, uh, off in, oh, in, in the little okay. mountains of Ojai. Yeah. That's not too far. It's not too far. Yeah. It's pretty close. spa up there. Yeah, exactly. The a little spa Valley. day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talk to some aliens and have a spa day. Relax that That's anus, nice. babe. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing right now? <laughs> I practice. You know uh, who else uh, you're really good yeah. friends with is Christy Romano, right? Oh, yeah. I know and Christy. You know, do you, you know, know Christy? I do know Christy. No her way. and I were always up against each other for everything. Oh, and bet. her and I were the last two for Meadow. Oh, no way. Yeah. yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you're the one that did it to her. Yeah, uh -huh. shut up. That's wild. Yeah, but she, I mean, but do you have that? Do you have, ever have like a role that it was like you're like, oh. she cornered her in a vestibule and was like, it's my fucking. <laughs> role, bitch. Um, you know what? I did get a bunch of callbacks for, huh. which was so wrong, and I, but I don't know why, was the Anna Ferris role in Just Friends. Really? Yeah, no like wow. four or five callbacks. Just now, it's just coming up? This is just now well, coming up. Well, I was up. actually thinking of mentioning it, and then I'm like, no, that's like a douchey thing to say. No, but no like, that's great. It was like one of those random things where I was like, I am not funny, but this guy thinks I'm hilarious, so I'm going to keep coming back in. In a different world, you guys have an MTV award. Exactly. Uh, yeah, an exactly. MTV nomination. Exactly. Yeah. Um, no, I mean... I don't know. I mean, the couple of pilots, yeah. probably in the past couple of years, but it's always that thing where you're like, of course it wasn't the right yeah, thing yeah. for me. But you know? it's always interesting when you look at, because we've asked a lot of the former kid actors on this podcast uh, that question, because you realize too sometimes, you know, I mean, like like a sh like you guys show The Sopranos, right? You know, you, that that starts to become like a, a, a f you know jobs like that become the fabric of your life mm -hmm. you know in many ways mm -hmm. and not many jobs do that and so sometimes as an actor you go up for some role that you're like ah oh, just another audition and then 20 years later you're like man that would really make life look different you know yeah. it's like there's and so it's it's interesting because I think almost everybody has that has yeah. some sort of well I want to hear yours uh, and I want to hear and if you want to share it uh, you can if not I get it but was there an actor that you were constantly seeing in the audition room yeah. and uh every generic white guy yeah. <laughs> like yeah. every yeah. single yeah. Sure. generic with average a little looking, something special about a little something special about a little <laughs> uniqueness you're like no you guys look exactly the same but you're a little different personality right. like yeah. it's just a uh, uh, like generic white man face is what i always said i, I well, there's a lot of those roles there's a lot of those roles yeah, <laughs> yeah. and um, they used to be they yeah i was about to say they're yeah. diminishing in some capacity <laughs> thank, thank god yeah and the uh but the, the yeah a lot of those guys like for a long time and it's always switched they just we just morph into into wherever i think everybody's careers are at at different times mm -hmm. but growing up for a long time it was Shia LaBeouf 
And so I was going to say, yeah, 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 we auditioned together for a long time. And um, Even Stevens, uh, you were on, and yeah. then AJ Trouth, your co- podcast co-host, is on, on Even Stevens. Yeah, on Even so they worked Stevens. together, and then I did Even Stevens playing Evil Shia or the, whatever that character was. So we started to li- later on. We did like an episode of ER where we were two kids fighting each other, and you're not sure which one's the bad one. And so we oh. kept we like worked with each other a bunch, and then we just kept seeing each other in audition rooms for like years. Yes. Um, yeah, and then. It morphed into like Justin Long for a long while. It's uh-huh. just like me and Justin, just always they're you know, like, well, it's you and Justin again. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Uh, and Jesse Eisenberg for a long bit. Um, I think it's a great compliment to you because I each one of those guys is a, a different flavor and they pr- bring yeah. something specifically to acting and you have it all. You have all those oh, traits. <laughs> well, no, like when you <laughs> think you think Shia LaBeouf, um, he's a he, I, he's a well-rounded actor to me, and he's good at many things. Yeah. I, Justin Long, I I think uh, I know he can do drama, but I think there's a guy who's they need a strong comedic sensibility and, yeah. and um, instinct. And then uh, was the last one you said? Jesse Eisenberg. Eisenberg's yeah. that very like you know analytical, yeah. fast talking. You can do all that. Yeah. Does that make yeah. you feel nice? It does. It, it does nice make me feel nice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Am that I a nice, nice guy for yeah. saying that? Yeah, you're a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. No, but you're speaking the truth. Yeah. But I'm. I like the way you can see it. Yeah, yeah. I, I. I gotta imagine. You know, there's and those guys have been up for so much, and I gotta imagine that there was one that maybe you you really wanted and that you didn't get, and or and one that you did get, you didn't think maybe you were gonna get. I mean, is there's there, a ton. Yeah, there's always. How a do ton. you? Yeah. You can't live with that as regret. I mean, but no, you but just, when you're younger, you might have for a little while. Right? Yeah, I mean, and even older, it, you can. I mean, yeah. this stuff can haunt you. I think as long as you let it. You yeah. Know, to yeah. some degree, because yeah. there's been times where like. I mean, there's times in life where I feel like I'm in a bad sitcom and like every time I pull stop at a red light, there's a billboard and it's like, fuck you, Chris. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. Just, I'm like, oh, uh, so, you know, coming to Amazon Prime. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's literally it. So there's, you know, there's that aspect to, I think, being an actor. Um, and then there's the times where I just feel really grateful and happy and lucky and, yeah. you know, and that I've been able to withstand, um, a long actor's life, you know, yes. which is a really crazy, frustrating, shitty life for the most part. Sure. You know, it's really shitty until it's really good. Yes. And it's uh, and so there's a, you know, I think that there's a um, I don't know. I, th- I think I think if you want to be an actor longer than a few years, it's like Zen in the art of auditioning is really what you have to like adapt and, and adopt and and pick up in your life. Uh, otherwise, it like. I think you're just a mess in a yeah. very yeah. short amount of time, and um, yeah, and for that reason, because it's a weird, you know, being in a. It, there's two things. One, I think actors. This is where I'll, I'll, I'll wax poetic on acting. If you yeah, here we yeah? go. Cool. We're giving you this space. Yeah. To okay. Cool. Crawl up this, your I own feel ass. like we're here all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh, no, I just think that there is a. What's Rob Brighton over there? Uh, I, I was. Do you want? I, I, yeah, I know yeah. I'm going to be interrupting you. No, no, no. Let's do it. Uh, I just think when when There's you're great younger, notes. There's a lot of notes. I gotta know what's yeah. on the notepad. When when you're well, younger, sure. it's all yeah. just what's in my mind. Yeah. It's very dark. <laughs> uh, I think when you're younger, Cassim's anus. <laughs> yeah. Girlfriend, not girlfriend. <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> when you're younger, it's so like rejection means nothing. Like uh, yeah. you know, like at, at eight years old, if it was like, oh, you didn't get the part like oh do you want to do yeah whatever like i i just never care like i'm sure jamie cared more because oh. she cares about everything but, but you did oh. but, oh. but this oh. that oh. might speak bedroom. to you specifically though yeah i think it does well but no because when i feel like when you get older and you get a role and, and like now you know you did sopranos they're expecting to see like somebody come in who's prepared and this and then you prepare and you don't get it it's like preparing for that rejection when you're older is just like man f- i don't want to do it anymore yeah you know what i mean like yeah. it's just like fuck that where when you're a kid it's like I never, you know, it's like you on three auditions, you didn't get any of them. It's like, uh, okay, it's yeah. a where when well, you're older, it's just like, I don't want to fucking drive around to go prepare to get fucking rejected. And it's just well, you wow. also are not having to worry about making a living. Yeah, the stakes are different. Yeah. Of course, yeah. The, what it means to your life is totally different. Because, yes. I mean, I imagine it's the same thing if you're playing sports as a kid, you know, where you can, like, go play sports. Then maybe at high school they're like, you know, if you don't start winning these championships, you'll never be in the NBA. Yeah. And you're like, oh, sh- shit, yeah. okay. You yeah. know, it's like stakes change and your relationship to, you know, the the life of, of acting yeah. and stuff changes yeah. and, and those decisions. But, and, and you know, Again, with the since we're talking child kid acting in particular, that's one thing that we wanted to focus on with this podcast was that was like how people revisit these 
because you know what happens right is you made a decision at eight or whenever you started to be an actor and you're like cool yeah yeah i'll do this and then you have to <laughs> you're suddenly having to like revisit that decision you know at 10 and 12 and 15 and 20 yeah. and 30 you know and 40 yeah. and it's like it just keeps going and it's a really long strange process i think actors go through whether they continued acting or not yeah uh, that's never talked about you just don't hear yeah. much about it you know because you kind of just see either two versions you see like someone where you're like where'd they go or you see someone that's like still love them you know it's like you, you, there's two lanes and they're very yeah. carved out and they're very obvious uh and i think that there's more i think 90 percent of actors are like literally in the middle you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I would get frustrated, but it, it it would bother me when people would be like, oh, hey, are you still acting? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm fucking busting my ass, <laughs> yeah, like exactly. trying to keep into this. Yeah. But I was talking to a girlfriend of mine the other day, <clears throat> and I was saying, I was like, you know, I used to think it was like, if I could like, visually give you it was like a wheel like you're either killing it or you're like you're you're in work or you're out of work and it was like this and it's somewhere in the past year or so i've kind of looked at it more as like if it got flipped horizontal and it's like you're on it and you're in it doesn't mean your talent went away doesn't mean your worth went away but every once in a while the ride stops where the doors open you're like oh yeah it's my turn yeah do you know what i mean and i really feel like that allowed me to kind of settle into committing to this again because mm. for a long time I especially after I had kids I was like do I even want to do this anymore like I was in and out of it for a lot of different reasons and I think that once I settled into that it really allowed me to feel more comfortable with my decision of like yes I'm an actor yes I love to do this yes it's hard but I I'm I gotta trust my gut and that this is what's for me yeah you know yeah and the recommitting is a really yeah, it's a lot to go through. It is. You know? it and there's is. some people who yeah. never made the decision. Like, I never made a decision. Yeah. I was right. six years old. Yeah. The guy saw me on the street and told my parents, like, oh, you know, he should be an actor. And I was like, well, okay, well, now he's going on auditions. Like, yeah. you know, it wasn't yeah. like I sat around wondering what. Once I was old enough to make a decision, I was like, I'm out. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, because you because we found that like my my co-host AJ, he always said that to me growing up. He was like, I don't know, every a lot of our friends, they like at twelve or thirteen were like, I want to be in Can't Hardly Wait. That movie's awesome. You know, it's like they yeah. made decisions, and I was like, I I always just like came into consciousness and was like, I'm acting. <laughs> it's yeah. like yeah. I just like it was just a normal part of my life, yeah. without ever having made that decision. And it was yeah. also, I think it was one part about like you know I talk about weird things about the way I grew up and this like one thing that's so great about growing up in a way where like when i wouldn't get an audition my the way my family was was like well fuck them like you know it was like, it was like they're, they're pieces of shit anyway like you know like and, and you're just like and so that's what you think you know yeah, you're yeah. like yeah fuck you yeah. like, you know it's <laughs> well, great you it's so <laughs> great it's so great hearing you because that is i i do have these very very vivid impressions of you from all those experiences <laughs> and i've always, I always wondered i literally did for like a long time as a teenager i was like how do you how do you get to be like that? You know, because you really, you were like, you just don't give a fuck. And that's so nice. I think I think most actors try to adopt that or yes. have to uh, at a certain point. And so the fact that you, um, that it was bred into you, is, yeah. it makes total sense. And it's, you know, and I imagine is, you know, um, what served you really well. When you I also there. think there's something about, because I have a lot of friends who are like that, being raised like literally in New York City, like, you know, like open my door and I'm on the street of New York City. Wanting everyone to like you seems ridiculous because yeah. just going to get like a soda, you see 500 people, yeah. you know, and you have so many friends, you meet so many people that it's like, I don't need, uh, why the fuck do I need people to like me? Like yeah. there's so fucking many of them everywhere. We're like, when I would see the way my brothers grew up, living upstate and they would be like, oh, I'm going to John's house. And like, they could go from their house to John's house, only see John and come back and see one person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where if I went to go see a friend, it's like, yeah, I just saw 3000 people yeah, exactly. just yeah. going to see yeah, a four friend. Four block radius. Yeah. Right. And, you're, and I'm not like, man, I wish I want to make friends. I want people to <laughs> yeah. like me. Like, I, yeah. You're like, get out of my way. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. you know, when I you're on the train. I more and... opposite. I mean, I, when I came to the country, you know, <laughs> I was like so self-conscious. I was like, oh, I have an accent. I got to A, lose this accent. B, I've got to like. You when you were a kid? When I was a kid. And so when I, when I moved to the United States, and then I moved from, and then I moved within the United States, state to state. I had to like start over, you know, at a new school. And mm. doing that was like nothing else mattered to me than like just fitting in. Yeah. 
Hmm. So I let go of anything that made me me and unique. And I was like, I'm just going to, I'm going to see how that kid dresses. And then like next week, I'm going to we- be wearing the same. <laughs> Those shoes are going to be on my feet. I need to blend in as much as look possible just like because Hillary Swank when yeah, I'm older. Just, yeah. I want to. I want to have those arms. And what bicep workout is she doing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I was constantly thinking about. I need. I want people to like me because I've in my head. I had so much going against me. Like I'm not from here. I don't look like I'm from here. I uh, I, I got glasses, acne. My teeth are crooked. You know, like <laughs> I, I in my head. I literally would wake up and be like. I put all that stuff on my shoulders and yeah. I like uh, go to school today. Here we like, go. Yeah. You know, yeah. and like I better make somebody laugh. Yeah. You know, every time I'd make somebody laugh, it's like I stood up a little straighter and, yeah. and one of those things came off. And what I would have given to have that, you know, like when I went back. Just Jordan, thank God you didn't go to school with me. Yeah. Okay, I know. <laughs> yeah. oh you wouldn't God, be here today. <laughs> and then and then I thought going back to Jordan in 2014, I'd be ab- uh, amongst people that now I look like. Right. But now I've washed <laughs> myself of any culture. And now yeah. I'm I'm a foreigner to people that are technically my blood family. And so I was like, I've always been in this in between yeah. s- s- state. So, yeah, that's a tricky feel bad one. for me. Ask pajama yeah. pants. It's kind of like your sexuality. <laughs> it's, on a, it's on a dimmer, yeah. dude. Sexuality is a spectrum. I'm somewhere on it. Uh, so I heard that episode too. I like yeah. that. <laughs> that was so every comfortable. Episode. It's every episode. Yeah. yeah. Okay, every good. Episode. I'm glad this is a common. You'll, they'll dig it out of you someday. I've kissed dudes for sketches. I totally get Have that. You? Yeah, I've kissed the them. No, I've never kissed dudes for sketches. Next no, time, I haven't yes, done Andy, it. Yeah, okay? Exactly. So you got close there. Be careful. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think it's so cool the podcast you have. I oh, think thank that's you. such a great idea. I'm so yeah. interested and I can't wait to listen to it. Thank yes. you. Yeah, I think it's exciting. There's, a, It's been a really nice. Uh, we approached it really thoughtful and we, we feel like that thoughtfulness has, has allowed other people to be you know comfortable enough to like yeah. sort of really look at their lives you yeah. make it very accessible because yeah. this thing of child acting is such a unique thing that only a small group of people get to be a part of right. but when i listen to it i'm like god like i get it like you guys are struggling essentially with the same things just on this through this lens you know yeah. the fact that you guys all lived in a in an area called Oakwood Apartments, yeah. and you guys all lived in a place together. Yeah. Like if you don't know, out here is an area called o- Oakwood. Yeah, uh, we've talked about it. Oh, that's okay, where, remember that's where Rob and I showed up for. Uh, HBO oh yeah, flew it's us just... out for an award show. And oh, I'm sure. It's yeah. so nothing weird. There. Yeah, there's it's still nothing so there. weird. To yeah, me. it is. It's this giant city of apartment buildings in the middle of L.A. Is it still that? I, it's now called Avalon. But is it still the like same that. situation? St- I I'm I'm would bet money on it. I don't know for there's, sure. Has there been a documentary? I, the just, they did. Yeah, they they they've tried to make documentaries. I, apparently, HBO tried to make a TV show, like a full, oh, really? yeah, like a full actual like narrative. In the Shia LaBeouf Honey Boy movie, is that? That's probably in Oakwood? it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when wow. the little motel y area that him and his I dad. I don't know if that's know. Oakwood actually, but the no, because Oakwood's like a and they're literally buildings A through Z, and it's A B C D. Oh, every oh, single okay. building has that. Yeah. So, um, how is there twenty six letters in the alphabet? So there's t- like twenty six buildings. Each building has like. I don't know, 300 units or something. Whoa. So it is a city oh, wow. and it's so big. There's a I north and south happen. side. Oh, wow. And so, and it would take probably good 10, 15 minutes to walk from one side to the other. Wow. It's a whole mountain range behind well, Little Lake Robbie's Hollywood. not doing that. Yeah, I had no idea it was that you want me to, It was taking me three <laughs> hours. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so you, uh, the real deal was everybody, all the kid actors would steal the security guards' golf carts and then just like, you know, make all their right. way to the other side. Yeah. Who was your first guest? Um, our first guest was Vanessa Chester, who was the little girl in Jurassic Park 2. Mm-hmm. And uh, and um, what's this, this movie with Alfonso Coran, The Little Princess? Um, and uh, and Harriet the Spy, and so yeah. she'd done these like yeah. movies as a kid, and has you know worked ever since. Uh, but we interviewed Mara Wilson, which was really exciting. It was in Mrs. Doubtfire, yes. you know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, and who's like. I don't know if she realized she's like the foremost expert in ch- former kid actor. She's the only one that's like written a book about it. Oh, wow. Um, and she wrote a book about her life, but she just like, she just goes off on the child actor. Yeah. And she really, and she's written articles for all kinds of great publications about child actors. Um, she ri- She's written a, gr- great, a ton of great stuff on why kid actors go crazy essentially like what that is yeah. um and she breaks it down so she's really smart she was very very cool to talk to and 
uh, and not just get her experience acting yeah. and, and then getting out of acting, um, but uh, you know her sort of understanding of the kid actor in general and the psyche and uh, and the lanes everybody carves out for themselves. And then, but we've been talking to like. I mean, we've been talking to people you'd know and people you'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, so sure. like there's, you know, there's like we talked to this great actress named Andrea Bowen who was on Desperate Housewives yeah. for like nine years and uh, and Josh Zuckerman who played um, young Dr. Evil in the Austin Powers movies, oh, okay. but also like you'd know him more as an adult actor. He yeah. did like yeah. the movie Sex Drive and did this, the new 90210 show. So he's like acted almost more as an adult than as a kid yeah so we're you know it's both and then there's like a good friend of mine in andrew mcfarlane who was on my wife and kids for a long time the damon wayne show but he stopped acting right after the show and he moved to bali and opened up like a juice business oh uh, my god and is now, wow. so he's so we've 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 tr essentially tried to get the the whole display and try to yeah. get everybody um including some people that have had like some really rough goes at stuff yeah. you know um, and there's like, we talked to a, uh, not to put that disclaimer on him, but there's a great young actor named Stephen Anthony Lawrence who like was every funny, goofy kid in every movie for like 15 years. And he was in like a Will Ferrell movie and a Martin Lawrence movie and he was on Disney, all stuff. Uh, and then he became like that clickbait type of mm. bullshit that you see on the internet. He became the guy of like, would you believe, you know, oh, yeah. and all. And, uh, and so if you like Googled his name, you'd find like, I asked him on the podcast, I was like, why, why when I Googled your name, does it say Stephen Anthony Lawrence Chance the Rapper? And he was like, oh, yeah, it's because, you know, Chance used my image as his, like, Twitter profile pic for a long while. And I was like, why? He's like, I don't know. And I wrote him, I don't know. So it's like he became this, like... I don't know, like a funny image, yeah. you know, it's like, like a his, meme. Yeah, like a meme. And it's a, and it's a straight, you know, his life has, has, you know, it took on a life of its own. Um, wow. You know, his life as a kid actor a decade after he stopped essentially acting. And so we've talked to him a bunch and his story is um, really moving and really like, um, it's the one story we've had so far where if anybody's interested, uh, if you have ever looked at clickbait for a kid actor, you're going to be like, I'm going to punch myself in the face. Yeah. <laughs> you're, like, yeah. you're like, I'm yeah. such a dick. No, That's it's important yeah. for people to hear that. Yeah, though. I think so. I think there's a whole side to it that yeah. uh, really, you know. But Mara Wilson said, this is the last thing, Mara Wilson said something great to us. She said, you know, it's nice you guys are doing this podcast because the kid actor just never got the chance hasn't got the chance yet to tell their story themselves, you know? And I yeah. was like, oh, that's, yeah. That's a great point. Oh, shit. Oh, Somebody's always done yeah. it for them. I guess, yeah. yeah. We didn't really want that responsibility, but right. <laughs> here we are. Is there yeah. anything they all have in common? Like there's that? a lot, yeah. I mean, there's a lot to, uh, I think that there's an incredible amount of your identity and your self-worth that mm -hmm. gets um, almost inseparable from what your career is and the results of your career, you know, in many ways. I think a lot of people, uh, I think that it also seems like it doesn't ever leave you, you know, no matter what you do, no matter who you turn into or what else you do, it doesn't leave you. It becomes an, an absolute inseparable part of your adult life. Um, and I think that there is a, I think there's another weird common theme that a lot of your work as a kid actor a lot of times becomes a bit shameful as an adult only in that you're like I, well, I don't know you know I, I wasn't even thinking about it I didn't even do it I don't want to take credit for that you know and someone's like you're awesome you're like eh, kind of fuck you you know it's like yeah. there's yeah. just like a little distance that someone wants to put through it and it's yeah. really common and strange you know That's and we yeah and we noticed it off the bat and that we immediately took the approach of like no, we actually want to celebrate this shit because there's yeah. a lot of you could, like a lot of these kids. You know, were really talented and and brought some really some really wonderful, entertaining things to people. And we're like, we still think it's cool. You yeah, know? yeah. So, I get that from Rob a lot. Like he, yeah. he puts a lot of distance on that stuff, and I always I always think it's so cool and like yeah, uh, you know, to celebrate the stuff that he's done. And uh, but well, yeah. it's more so because I've talked about it so many times. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That it's like when somebody you just think comes, you're boring somebody. Also, like when somebody comes up to you and is like, excuse me, what time is it? You're not like, oh man, it is seven? Oh fuck. Like, you know, like you, you feel, like when yeah. people ask you about something that you've talked about a hundred times, you kind of feel like, oh, now I have to act all yeah, over sure. again. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like, I gotta, I can't just be like, yeah, hey, was this like, you, you want to put on like, oh yeah, you know, it was like, you have this stock answer because you've been asked a question so many times you yeah. ever done i there was a little while where me and a couple friends that were actors we would just speak yet we'd just speak like a made-up language just real fast 
So someone be like, all right, oh my God, yo, are you the guy? And we'd be like, and they're like, oh, oh. yeah. I guess not. Because <laughs> that guy would that, speak English. Yeah, because that guy knows what <laughs> right, I'm saying. Right, exactly. Yeah. Me and my friends yeah. would do a stupid thing where when we were in a cab in New York, and we would go by like a really crowded street. Mm. We'd put our arm out the window and be like, Tommy! And then like <laughs> everyone would turn and like six people would be like, you know, and then they'd all look at each other that they were all waving and no one would know who was in the cab. And we thought it was the funniest thing ever, but it was so stupid. That's funny. Well, Chris, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Thank yeah, you yeah so thank much. you. I hope we got to everything on that beautiful, wonderful notepad. All if not, he'll write it. it. You'll yeah. write it again, yeah. right? The podcast is called The Coogan Chronicles. Coogan Chronicles. Yeah. You can find, uh, you guys are on yeah, Instagram. Yeah. On Instagram, uh, Facebook. Yep. Uh, and we got you the have website. Chris Marquette uh, yep. on Instagram, Chris, Twitter. Yep, Chris Marquette on Instagram and Twitter, although I don't really tweet, but it's on there. Even better, even more of a my, reason to follow. Yeah, my idea is I'm like, <laughs> five years from now, I'll go on and then we'll see what happens yeah. in the last yeah. five years on there. We'll see what uh, happens. But yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I thanks so much. It's so nice hanging out with you guys. Just coming down to the back of the sweatshirt shop and, yeah. <laughs> and gracing us with your presence and awesome. i hope uh everyone checks out the pod um and then that's it for us yeah, yeah. we're, we're on yeah, instagram thanks for coming on, man. you can check us out if you're on youtube click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you know jamie's gonna be halfway up while, while i'm doing this uh, I'm, I'm sure she's got to pee again. Just getting my things together. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and we have a, a subreddit that the the listeners started for us, and that community is growing. R slash Pajama Pants Podcast, and um, and we'll get to your your emails and and uh, recommendations for Rob. Yeah. On the next show. We'll find Rob girlfriend. Also, when uh, Casim and I meet aliens, we'll come back and we'll oh, yeah. tell the world. Yeah. I'll yeah. let you know. Yeah, we'll let the know. We'll let the world. I know. might even come back to this planet. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, if if you like Casim. Say goodbye. Yeah. Yep. It's been real. <laughs> All right. So long, guys. <laughs>